On today's video, how this small, inexpensive part can end up costing you thousands of dollars in repairs on your Subaru engine. The PCV valve, a small, inexpensive part that can cause all kinds of headache and heartbreak for you as a Subaru owner and the health of your engine. What is a PCV valve and what does it do for your engine in your Subaru? Well, first off, the acronym PCV. It stands for Positive Crankcase Ventilation. The PCV valve and PCV system are an emission control system found on nearly all modern vehicles. The PCV system made its debut in the early 1960s. What does a PCV valve do? First, a little bit of history and theory. In your Subaru and, well, every internal combustion engine, there lies an issue, and this issue stems from gases and pressure building up in the crankcase of the engine. Well, where do these gases and pressure come from? In internal combustion engines, whether it be a 10-year-old car with 150,000 miles on it or a brand new vehicle off the dealer lot, no engine seals internally 100% the piston rings always have a slight amount of leakage. That leakage gets worse with age, but even brand new, 100% fresh build, they don't seal 100%. And during normal operation, a small amount of gas gets past these rings and it ends up in the crankcase. This gas is a combination of exhaust and unburnt fuel. As this gas gets past the rings while the engine runs, it builds up and as it builds up, it grows to be pressurized. These pressurized gases in the crankcase are commonly known as blow-by. Blow-by can be a great tool in telling you the health and overall condition of your engine. If you have a lot of blow-by, it's due to the fact that your rings are worn and not sealing as they should. So all of this pressure building up in the crankcase, it has to have somewhere to go. It can't keep infinitely building up and collecting in the crankcase. Eventually, it's going to find its way out of the engine. And normally, the easiest route out of the engine is through one of your oil seals. Whether it be a crank seal, a cam seal, the cam cover or rocker cover gaskets, the rear main seal, that pressure is going to find its way outside of the engine. And when it does, it's going to take out your oil seal and cause oil leaks. There's another downside to these gases building up in the crankcase. When these gases come into the crankcase, they bring some unburnt fuel, and this fuel can accumulate in your engine oil. This causes oil dilution, which makes the oil not as good at lubricating the internal parts of your engine and can cause premature wear and damage. Also, it can cause your oil to get dirty faster and start to sludge and to uh, get carbon deposits in it. So back in the early days of the internal combustion engine, they observed that this was an issue and they came up with a very simple solution to it. They added something called a downdraft tube. This was essentially just a hole in the engine block, either on the front, the rear, or the side of the block, with a metal tube that turned down and directed these gases and pressure down towards the ground. They also added breathers to the valve cover or valve covers, depending on if it was an inline engine or a V configuration engine, to help draw fresh air in through the top of the engine into the crankcase to try to deal with some of those gases, some of that unburnt fuel, and push it out the downdraft tube just naturally through the flow of air through the engine. Having the downdraft tube to allow the pressure to bleed off and go outside of the engine, as well as the breathers pulling in fresh air, helped to minimize the amount of sludge and fuel that was deposited in the oil due to the blow-by issue. Now this system worked well and it did its job, but there was one major downside and that was pollution. Allowing these unburnt gases, fuel, and this pressurized exhaust to just dump out of the engine block under the vehicle. So they had to come up with some kind of revision of this system to make it better, make it less polluting, and that's when the PCV system was realized and put into place, again in the early 1960s. So this PCV system, how does it differ from the old downdraft tube and breathers of the engines that came before it? Well, first off, the PCV system is a closed loop system. It's not like the old system that was open to atmosphere. The PCV valve is the key to this system working effectively. It's essentially a one-way check valve with a spring and is vacuum controlled. So PCV systems vary quite a bit depending on the vehicle manufacturer and the vehicle type and the engine type. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about Subaru engines, of course, 
And we're gonna be talking about this particular layout. There's a couple of different PCV systems, depending on if it's a naturally aspirated engine, a turbo engine, or a six cylinder or four cylinder engine. But in this case, we're gonna talk about the four cylinder boxer, which is the most prevalent with Subaru. So on this particular Subaru system, your PCV valve screws in right here on the back side of the engine block to the right of your throttle body, directly over the air oil separator. On the top side of the valve, you'll find a vacuum hose that goes back to either the air inlet or the intake manifold, somewhere that has engine vacuum on it. On the other side of the system, you'll normally find at least one hose on each of the rocker or cam cover supplying fresh air to the engine. They'll normally be attached to the intake box or intake tract in some way. So how the modern system actually works. Under normal operation, engine vacuum supplied to the valve will cause the valve to open. Once the valve's open, the pressurized blow-by in the crankcase can be drawn through the valve into the engine's intake manifold, into the cylinder heads, and burned once again. While this is happening, fresh air is drawn through each side of the engine through the breather covers in your cam or uh, rocker covers, which circulates fresh air through to help push that air out through the PCV valve into the engine, also helping to minimize the dilution of the oil with fuel and the exhaust that builds up inside. This closed loop system has solved the issues of the old system by reburning this blow by in the engine rather than dumping it out under the vehicle. So you might be asking yourself, where does this thousands of dollars worth of damage or repairs to your engine come into play that you mentioned at the beginning of the video? Well, simply with time and age, carbon deposits and other contaminants can build up inside of this valve, causing issues where it doesn't operate as it should. These deposits can get the valve in a bad situation where it gets stuck open, it gets stuck closed, or just hangs up and doesn't open and close freely as it should. You need to monitor this valve regularly with your regular maintenance and make sure that it's working correctly, it's clean and free of obstruction. If your valve happens to stick open, you might experience some of the following conditions. Engine misfires at idle, lean air fuel mixture, the presence of engine oil in the PCV valve or in the hoses, an increase in engine oil consumption by the engine, hard engine starting, possibly black smoke from the tailpipe, and oil fouling of your spark plugs. On the flip side, if your valve sticks closed, you could see some of these issues. An increase in internal engine pressures, failure of one or more oil seals and gaskets, engine oil leaks due to these failed seals and gaskets, a low whistling or moaning noise, moisture or sludge buildup inside of the engine under the engine oil cap, or mass air flow sensor trouble codes. This is why it's crucial for the health of your Subaru's engine to periodically check, clean, or replace this PCV valve. You don't want this little $20 part causing you massive repair bills or headaches with your vehicle. Quickly, we're gonna look at where the PCV valve is located on most Subaru vehicles, how to remove it, how to clean it, check it for proper operation, and how to reinstall the valve. On some EJ series engines, you'll find the PCV valve right here in the intake manifold on the end of this vacuum line rather than down there in the engine block. But you'll find it in one of these two locations. The EJ25D, for example, had the PCV valve right here in the intake rather than down there on the engine block. On the H6 engine, the EZ30 and the EZ36, you'll find the PCV valve right here in the left-hand rocker cover near the back side of the engine. Here on this FA20, the PCV valve is located in basically the exact same area as the EJ series engine. All you really need to do is remove the vacuum hose to it and grab a 19 millimeter socket and an extension if your intake manifold's still on, which this one has no intake manifold on it, so it's a lot easier to access. But it just merely threads into the engine block. Just like so. So here we have a couple of Subaru PCV valves. We've got one from an EJ25D, both a bad one, a brand new one, and then we've got one pulled from the FA20 that is just slightly dirty. We're gonna take a look at the differences in them and how to clean them and how to know if it's bad. So these PCV valves are pretty easy to check and see if they are operating correctly. Older guys used to call these things rattle valves because one of the easiest way to check them is to shake them back and forth and see if you hear an audible rattle. This is a brand new valve, so it is operating as it should, as you heard it rattled and it moved freely. 
This is the PCV valve we just pulled out of that FA20. We're going to give it the same rattle test and see how it sounds. You can hear it rattle slightly, but it's kind of gummed up, so it needs some cleaning. It doesn't look that bad. There's just a little bit of oil in it. Now at the other end of the spectrum, we've got this really abused and neglected EJ25D's PCV valve. And I don't know if you can see that really well in the camera, but it is almost completely carbon shut with buildup. We'll compare it to a fresh new PCV valve. Now you can see the big difference between these two valves. There's a lot of carbon, a lot of debris blocking the flow in this valve. And if we shake it, absolutely nothing. It's like shaking a rock compared to our good valve. This valve is at the point where it needs to be thrown away and replaced. $20 is not worth the headache of trying to clean this thing out and get it freed up and operating properly. Just unscrew it and replace it. This FA20 valve, on the other hand, can likely be fixed with a quick shot of brake parts cleaner and working it back and forth. And as you can hear with a quick shot of brake parts cleaner in the top and the bottom, this valve is a lot more freer and clicking or rattling a lot louder. It's less gummed up than it was when we took it off. Sometimes it helps to take a little pocket screwdriver and push the valve open and close manually while putting cleaner in it to help free it up even more, but that worked pretty good and this is ready to go back on the car now. So aside from reinstalling this to the manufacturer's recommended torque spec, all you really got to worry about is a little bit of either gray RTV silicone or uh, Teflon material on the threads to help seal it and make it airtight. And there you have it guys, don't let this little $20 part cause you lots of heartache and headaches and uh, pain to your wallet with issues. It's not that hard to maintain it, you can easily get at it, you know how it works now. So keep on top of it, clean it, check it, and replace it when needed. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, hope you enjoyed, I'll see you in the next one.